Hi everyone, Marion here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have another snoo video for you guys because we have officially weaned from the snoo. Breaks my little heart because my baby is growing up way too fast for me, but he is five months old and we have officially weaned from the snoo into his pack and play. And I'm gonna tell you guys all about how we did it and how it worked for us so I can give you guys any tips if you have a snoo or if you're considering buying one. And don't forget to subscribe because I have a few more snoo videos coming out. I know that this is a new product and there's not that much information or videos out there about it. So I wanted to get them out for you guys or for anyone who's interested. Okay, so let's just in. The snoo is meant to be used until your child is about six months, but you can wean any time before that that you would like. We were planning to keep him in the snoo until six months, but we ended up weaning him a month early at five months. And that sort of happened randomly because we had a lot of travel this summer and we were going to places where it just wasn't worth it to rent a snoo because we would only be there for a night or two, etc. So we ended up trying him in a pack and play because we were in other people's homes or on a vacation and there was nothing else we could do and he did great at it. So we'll get into the exact timeline, but what I do want to say first is that there is an amazing Facebook Facebook group called Snoo Mamas and the moms in there are really great about answering any questions and it's sharing their own stories. So if you have a Snoo and you're prepping for weaning mode I, and you're not part of that group, I suggest doing it. If you just bought one, I suggest joining the group. And I found it super helpful uh, for me during our journey. So we've had the Snoo ever since we brought my son home from the hospital and it has made a tremendous difference in my life. I kid you not people, <laughs> my older son was such a bad sleeper when he was a baby and it really, really was was hard during those early months because I was just getting no sleep and this time around things have just been a total 180 turn from that. Um, Corey is such a good sleeper. He has been sleeping through the night since two months old, which is just amazing. Um, I'll get into all the details of that, but basically I just want to say that for us, the snoo was a blessing in our lives, and I am very, very thankful that we were able to have it because it really was a total life changer for me in my experience of what sleep with a newborn had been like with and without the snoo. So since we brought him home from the hospital, I used the snoo on low motion mode. I think it's called limited motion. Um, the snoo's motion, you know, according to their website and all of that has been tested. It's like not too strong for the baby, et cetera, et cetera. But when you see it reach level four, the highest level, especially with a newborn, it was just like a little too much for me. So I put it on the motion limiter. I never locked it at a level. By the way, I'm making a whole separate video on snoo tips and tricks and all these levels of details. But I'm kind of directing this video at people who have a snoo and know all these terms but if you're interested to learn more about what I'm talking about and you don't have a snoo yet look out for that video coming up so I had it on limited motion I never locked it on a level and pretty much he was great with it I found it super useful for if I nursed him at night and then I put him in the snoo or I put him in a snoo for a nap I would put him in almost completely awake like it was his nap time and my baby was really good with the schedule like he liked his schedule um, 10 a.m. nap 2 p.m. nap like he was really good with that so I would put him in awake and the snoo would lull him to sleep and I found that super useful especially as a second time mom who has a toddler I didn't have all day to like be lulling and shushing and transferring and untransferring and retransferring because he woke up on the transfer like those little moments can be really exhausting as a mom especially as a new mom especially as a mom of two so I was very thankful for that so by two months he was pretty much sleeping through the night going into bed at or going into the snoo at nine and waking up at seven. We did move his bedtime earlier and earlier as he got a few months older because we didn't need as many feedings uh, later in the night. So he is now at a 7.30 bedtime and he pretty much wakes up at 6 a.m. every day. Starting around four months, he did hit the sleep regression. And because he's a little bit lower in weight percentage, um, I did nurse him when he would wake up at those times at night, and I did not sleep train him. Um, that's another important thing I wanted to get across in this video is we've used officially no sleep training method. We did use the Ferber method on my older son. In the end, we just had to, and I really, obviously, it was really hard as a mom to go through that, although it didn't take that long, but still, it's a tough experience when you have to sleep train. We have not had to sleep train Corey, which is one of the benefits that the Snooze website really puts out there is that if you use the Snoo all the way through, through weaning mode, you shouldn't have to do sleep training. Of course, some babies will still need it. My baby did it. I do think Corey is just naturally a good sleeper, at least he is as a baby. So when he started waking up during his four-month sleep regression, I did nurse him, like I said, and then would put him right back 
back in the snoo and again it was great because he just went right back to sleep and he, during the worst of the sleep regression he was waking up two to three times in the night and of course that was tough but at the same time he was only up for like between 10 minutes and half an hour at the very most just nursing and then I put him right back down and if he had been in and if he was a higher weight baby I would have just um, shushed him on my own I, you know padded him held him whatever and then put him back in the snoo and really like gotten rid of those nighttime feedings but because I was more concerned about getting him in the calories than I was about his sleep I chose to nurse him during those times and because I'm a nursing mom it's just so much easier to just be like here and then put it back <laughs> so I definitely recommend not weaning from the snoo until after the four month sleep regression I think you'll probably regret it um, and it's really nice to have the snoo during that tough spot so after his four month sleep regression we ended up on a family trip in Chicago and the first night this was our big first night without the snoo and it was definitely tough I ended up um, taking the pack and play mattress out of the pack and play because every time I transfer him he was like heck no get me out of this I took the mattress out and just put it on the floor and would just lie next to him and pat him and he woke up I don't know like five times throughout the night it was also really hard to do that first like get him to sleep it was like 45 minutes of just lying next to him and patting him and giving him a pacifier by the way he doesn't really take a pacifier he did a little bit when he was a newborn but both of my kids are just not that interested in pacifiers so that was definitely a tough first night but the second night of that trip he went to sleep right away and woke up i think maybe once in the night so i was kind of like wow um you know maybe you know it's just a first night of getting used to a totally different experience and he was fine so when we came home from that trip i switched to weaning mode so this was he was about four and a half months old this was like two weeks ago <laughs> not that long ago uh, switched to weaning mode which means there's no motion unless the baby starts crying and we put his arms out of the snoo we actually put his arms out of the snoo on that first trip in chicago because he was already rolling over both ways it's not safe to keep them totally swaddled so i think that was also really different for him um, in hindsight i wish i had taken his arms out of the snoo before that trip but anyways we came back he was arms out on weaning mode no motion and did great then we had another trip just a week ago where again we didn't want to rent a snoo he was already on weaning mode we thought let's just try the pack and play and once again the first night was a little bit tough just getting him to sleep that first time in the pack and play because it's just such a different environment also we were in like a different house everything was very different um and then by the second night he was fine i think we were there three nights and he did great he didn't wake up I don't think at all the second or third night maybe at around 4 30. I think this I think the second night he woke up at 4 30 and I fed him and he slept again until 7 30 and the third night he didn't wake up until 6 a.m which is his like normal wake up time so he did great so when we came home from the trip we just switched to the pack and play and we're done with the snoo what I did do is I used the snoo this is a little bit funny I kept the snoo on so that it would make its signature white noise and it's right here next to his pack and play so his pack and play is still in our room the snoo is still in our room and i turn on the snoo while he's sleeping because he recognizes that um, white noise i will say that that's not our forever plan we're in a bit of a transition like i said i have an older son who's still in his crib so we're gonna switch him to a big boy bed we're gonna get the crib um, and put it in my son's room transfer my son my younger son out of our room into his room into his crib so we just have a lot of moving parts but basically um, we're sort of using this pack and play as an in-between until the crib is ready for him to use and he can go into his own room with that which will probably be around six months six and a half um, I'm a little bit sad about him leaving our room so I might delay it a little bit but if he's continues to do well that probably will be the plan we also have two big dogs that make a lot of noise at night with their ear flapping and they're jumping in and out of bed so I know that that definitely affects Corey's sleep because I hear him like toss a little bit when I hear the dogs make noise I am also a really light sleeper so I'm aware of all of that so I think in the end it'll probably be best for him but we'll see how that goes so when he does that he will use his sleep sheep white noise maker we have had that for him and have used it while we're on vacation etc we ended up leaving it at our last vacation accidentally so I'm waiting to kind of get it back which is why I've been using the snoo white noise but I think it's actually worked out really well so we're going to transfer out of the snoo white noise just use the sleep sheep and he'll be in the crib but right now he is sleeping in the pack and play and doing great he does two naps in here at 10 a.m and 2 p.m 
program. Each of those is for between an hour to two hours, just depending on how he's doing. If he has shorter naps, I will put him in his baby carrier at around five and he'll take like a mini half an hour nap just to get through till bedtime, which is at 7.30. And he almost, and he's been sleeping all the way till 6 a.m. There will be the occasional night where he'll wake up around usually four and I will nurse him because once again, calories are still a priority to me over sleep. And to me, it's not that big a deal. He's right here you know, next to me. I just nurse him for 10, 15 minutes at the most, put him right back into the pack and play. He's asleep for the rest of the morning. So that's working out great for us. So that is how we wean from the snoo. It's been a real success to me. I don't know, of course, what his sleep will be like in six months or a year from now, but I do feel good about our snoo experience. I say this to people whenever they ask about, well, what if weaning had gone badly? I say that I would much rather be up at night six months after giving birth than six days after giving birth. I think that postpartum experience is really, really hard and anything out there to make it easier for new moms is best for me. Also, the snoo is known as the safest sleeping place for a baby and that gave me a lot, a lot, a lot of comfort and made sure I wasn't doing anything unsafe because I know with my older son, this was before the rock and play was recalled, we would sometimes have him sleep in there because I was just so desperate. There was just I couldn't get him to sleep anywhere besides on me. So occasionally out of exhaustion, I think we were making poor choices. So I was happy to have the snoo to know that there was always a safe option there that my baby liked. So that's our snoo weaning story. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up and stay tuned for a few more snoo videos coming up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.